What is up people? I've seen a lot of talk on the node system in general and a lot of comments and posts comparing it to New World and how New World system sucks. And I want to talk a bit more about why exactly they are different and what Intrepid is doing to prevent nodes from collapsing and failing. But before we get into this, 80.7% of you watching this content still aren't subscribed. That means you aren't getting notified of new Ashes of Creation content and are missing out. So click that subscribe button and help the channel hit the goal of 10k subs by the end of the year. To understand a bit more about how Intrepid tends to work on its node system, let's take a look at New World, which a lot of you compare Ashes of Creation system to. And I assure you, they are not even close to the same thing. The first thing to note is that New World's territory system was thrown together in less than two years, well after the idea of Ashes of Creation's node system was in development. New World was originally planned as a open world PvP sandbox MMO where players would literally craft everything with their bare hand and set out to wage war on one another. Something that I really wish they stuck with because now New World doesn't even know what it is. So, when New World went with this style they are with now, they added the territory system. Each territory has an outpost ready for players to hang out in and get quests that are almost identical in feel to each other. Nothing really makes these guys stand out from one another in terms of feel and there is no exclusive vendors or anything like that locked into them and as you level up you jump from zone to zone changing your in from territory to territory until you hit max level never really sticking around for too long. Every territory can be controlled by one of the three factions in the game, and each outpost has its own mayor to represent them. The mayor sets the taxes and decide which crafting stations to level up, and the players do various quests dedicated to leveling these stations. They don't unlock any special content or unique gear, they just provide good crafting stations depending on the mayor. And honestly, the whole system is just a poor, rushed together ripoff of what Intrepid is building. It's like Amazon Game Studios thought if they just got it out the door, they would fix it later and have a one-up on Ashes when it launches, but that didn't really work out too well for them. When you look at Ashes of Creation, the world starts out empty. Players pick the starting zones to these empty worlds and then jump in and set out on their adventures. There's no cities, there's no big capitals that you go to, there's no outposts, it's an empty world. It's the players adventuring that levels up these nodes, and there are four very different types of nodes to level up, from economic to military to divine to scientific, each giving their own unique features and feel to these nodes, unlocking different things depending on the type of node. These nodes start out at what is known as the Wilderness Stage and can be leveled up all the way to Metropolises, which are booming cities that are said to be the hubs. At the start of the game's life, yes, most servers will probably feel similar in terms to nodes out there, because everyone is going into the world in the same five locations, heading into the same beginner areas to level up those first nodes. But once these first nodes are leveled, people really start to set out on whatever their objective is. That could be questing, that could be PvP, that could be dungeons and raids, so players are going to start looking for areas that benefit them. As a merchant, you're not going to want to hang around a military node, you'll want to head to an economic node where your trade can flourish, and all of a sudden, the population will begin to spread out more and more, and these servers will start to come to life in different ways. So really, those who think that each server will be exactly the same aren't completely wrong at the start. And if Intrepid does their job right, there will be tons of things to do in every direction, not making one area more appealing to the next, allowing players to spread out in various unpredicted directions. Now, as these nodes level, more content within the node's zone of influence becomes available. That could mean new world bosses or dungeons, or perhaps a world event triggered due to you killing a certain boss. The higher level a node, the more dangerous the wilderness around it will become. Within these nodes, the mayors, which are elected by the player, begin shaping the future of these nodes. Setting the taxes like in New World, but also declaring trade routes to get resources, deciding what the taxes will be spent on, which can lead to building new points of interest such as social organizations, crafting areas, or even more housing for the player. They can even declare war on other nodes and mark foreign citizens from other nodes as enemies of the state, potentially putting a bounty on their head as well. Eventually, after a few months, servers will get to the point where they can't really grow anymore in their current direction. Not because they used all 106 areas, 
but because each server can only have five metropolises and the surrounding nodes, also known as vassal nodes, can only level up to one level less than the highest node it neighbors. Eventually capping out the nodes for each server, and by then the game's population should level out, the hype should die down, and people will have found their homes. Which, within these homes, you could potentially level from 1 to 50 in the same node as the content will continue to grow and not really have the need to hop around. So literally, it could be your actual home in the game, and you could decide that you're an official citizen of it if you buy a house. At this point, I imagine that there will be a calm before the storm, so to speak. People will be grinding towards max level, gearing up and exploring, seeing what Vera has to offer, and completing new dungeons, raids, and all of that. But eventually, you will want new content. Or a poor mayor cancel somebody's previously set trade agreement, making certain resources harder to get, or maybe there's just some guild drama and one guild wants to wipe out the other and they're going to take out their nodes. This is when the node wars break out. A mayor can declare war on the node and in this war they can destroy the nodes in the process, wiping them off the map for new nodes to level up in its place. And if that was a military metropolis you destroyed, it could really shake things up because all of those city level nodes now have a chance to be that fifth metropolis in the world and that once military metropolis on one side of the world could turn into an economic metropolis on the other side of the world, becoming a new major hub for players and changing the entire dynamic of the server depending on which kind of nodes get developed. If your node is one of the ones to come under siege, you'll want to defend it too. As you've made it your home, your house, or your freehold is here, your crafting materials could be stored here, all at risk by a war declared by a node you have never even visited. Nodes are the roots to Ashes of Creation, and they are tied into almost every single game function in some way which alone should give players enough incentive to support their homes or potentially destroy other people's homes. The only issue that I see Ashes of Creation running into down the road is server population. Each server is said to have 10,000 players on it at launch, which in comparison to New World, New World has about 1,000 players per server server last I checked, which at launch will be absolutely great, but no game ever maintained their launch number, which is why you have server queues and all this stuff. So. You can still funnel all that population into one server without having to make a bajillion other servers to all die out. But servers are still going to die out and eventually people will move on to other projects. But with the way nodes work, Intrepid won't be able to just merge servers together without resetting the entire progress of each server. So this could be the only big issue down the road that they need to figure out with nodes. Otherwise, I believe that nodes are the future and I imagine that if Ashes of Creation is as successful as we all want it to be, a lot of people will look to this technology when developing their own games, perhaps changing the MMO market as a whole. What are your thoughts on nodes in Ashes of Creation? Drop a comment down below and if you're new to Ashes and have yet to create an account, feel free to use my referral code in the description below to jump in on the forums or just to be ready when the day comes that you can finally step foot into Vera. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications and stay tuned for a lot more to come.